There's a chapter in Bright Green Lies called Solving for the Wrong Variable. And what we're talking about in that chapter is how environmentalism at one point was about saving wild places and wild beings from this culture. And it's been transformed into trying to save the very culture that is killing the planet, that's killing the wild places and wild beings. And a great example of that is, you know, you can get a million people to march on the streets of Washington, D.C., or 100,000 people to march on the streets of Washington, D.C., or New York, or Paris. And if you ask them what they're doing, they'll say, we're trying to save the planet. And you ask them for their specific goals, specific demands, they would be, we want subsidies for wind and solar. So basically, the, the environmental movement has been turned into a lobbying arm of industrial capitalism. And that's because there are a lot of those big groups are solving for the wrong variable. They're, they're solving for another way. I've said this for decades is that what do all the so-called solutions to global warming have in common? They take industrial capitalism as a given and the natural world is having to conform to industrial capitalism as opposed to taking the natural world as the independent variable, as the thing to be, that, that is the, the must be protected and the social system as being the dependent variable. And that's literally insane in terms of being out of touch with physical reality, because if you, if you don't have a living planet, you don't have any social system whatsoever. And it's not just environmentalism where this happens, this happens solving for the wrong variable happens in all sorts of areas of our, of our lives. And we slash I do it all the time. I mean, you can be in a really, say you're in an abusive relationship. There, there can be like, how can I fix this relationship? That's solving for the wrong variable. Really what you should be doing is how can I get out of this relationship? And there can be, um, You know, you can, this, this circumstances like this can happen in, in every sort of area. Here's a, here's a, a, a small example. Many years ago, I had a car that was a very old car falling apart and um, it had a transmission problem and the question I asked is how can I fix the transmission and in this case the question I should have asked is should I just get rid of the car because I fixed the transmission and like which cost me a bunch of money and then like two weeks later the timing belt went out or whatever it was some some other major problem and so this is this is a way you know I've I've talked before about how unquestioned assumptions are the real authorities of any culture and it's the same with questions that the framing of a question oftentimes determines the answer that we give and so I try generally in my life and in my work I try pretty hard to try to frame the question correctly. I mean, the question is not, how do we continue to go back to the beginning? The question is not, how do we continue to fuel industrial civilization? The question is, what can we do to protect wild nature?